Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss the notion of what's called infinite limits. So sometimes we'll write stuff like this. So limit x approaches c of f of x and we'll write the infinity symbol here. So in this case the limit does not exist. Recall that a limit will exist only if it's equal to a number. So what does this mean? So this means that f of x, well, how would you read it? You would say the limit of f of x as x approaches c is infinity. So as x approaches c, f of x approaches infinity. So that means that f of x grows without bound. So in other words, it gets really, really big. So how big? Actually, as big as you want it to be. So f of x just goes up forever. It just gets really, really big as x approaches C. So that's what that means. So here's a, a quick uh, picture. So you see an example of this. Say we have um, the y-axis and we have the x-axis. So this is x, this is y. And so our graph here, I'll, I'll draw it over here. Uh, here is uh, one, two, three. We have a vertical asymptote here. And our function does this. It just goes up like this, and then it goes up like this. And this is the graph of f of x. So in this case, if we take the limit of f of x as x approaches 3, well, if you approach from the left, it goes up forever, so you get infinity. If you approach 3 from the right, uh, you also get infinity. So from the left, you get infinity. From the right, you get infinity. So the answer is infinity. Now, it doesn't mean that the limit exists. The limit still does not exist. But this is a more descriptive answer, right? This is descriptive. It tells us what's happening to the function when x gets close to 3. So it's, it's better than just putting d and e. You can also clearly replace the 3 with one-sided limits, and the results are the same. So in, in fact, you could write x approaches 3 from the left is equal to infinity and you can also write limit x approaches 3 from the right equals infinity so both of these are acceptable as well likewise we can do the same thing for negative infinity if we write limit x approaches c of f of x equals negative infinity so this means so this time it goes down forever right the graph will just go down forever so this means that f of x decreases without bound, so decreases, decreases without bound as x approaches c, so as x approaches c, so it gets smaller forever. Let's, let's look at a picture, why not, let's do it, it's kind of, a, kind of interesting. So here's an example, so here is the y-axis here is the x-axis. And let's just take the example we had, but I'll, I'll move the asymptote to 2. So here's our vertical asymptote. Let's make it go down this time, right? So now it goes down. So in this case, when we take the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, right? say this is the graph of f of x, we get negative infinity, right? And from the left, it's negative. So from the left, it's negative infinity. From the right, it's negative infinity. Therefore, uh, in general, it's negative infinity. So that's graphically uh, what, what these uh, limits mean. These are called infinite limits. Let's do a couple of simple examples, just maybe one or two, uh, where we try to compute some of these like without a graph. And this takes a little bit of practice. So the in the examples that follow, uh, you'll, have, you'll have more examples of this. Let's approach 4 from the left of 1 over x minus 4. Let's think about this. So there's no real way um, to like algebraically show the work here. So there's no real correct way of doing this other than like using the definition like uh, with epsilon and n, which I didn't write. So it's a lot harder. Uh, typically, you, you don't have to do that in a calculus 1 course. Maybe advanced calculus, but, but not calc 1. So how do you do it? Um, well, you could draw a picture, or you could use intuition. 
let's do it uh, using intuition. So up top we have a number, which is one. So we have a positive number. Okay, what's happening on the bottom? Let me draw a little picture. So here's four and X is over here because it's approaching from the left. So it's getting really close to four from the left. So just, it's getting infinitely close to four. So pick a number less than four that's close to four, like 3.99. So if you do one over 3.99 minus one, you get one over negative 0.01, right? So as you get closer and closer to four, you get a negative number here, and then this number here is really small. So you get something negative, and you get something super small. Okay. And I'm going to claim that this is going to approach negative infinity. So how do I do that? Well, if you have 1 over something small, that's big. Okay, it's big. Consider like 1 over 0 0.1. 1 over 0 0.1 is 10. If you put it in your calculator, you'll get 10. 1 over 0 0.01 is 100. 1 over 0 0.001 is 1,000. So you see it gets out of hand really quick. So the smaller the bottom is, the bigger the fraction. So this is super big, right? But then we have a negative here that's going to make it go to negative infinity. So the answer is negative infinity. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. This is a tough, tough concept uh, for people to grasp. Um, sometimes people get it right away, and then sometimes people don't. That's how it is uh, in math, right? Some topics are easier than others for certain people. Let's approach 2 from the right, and let's keep it simple again, 1 over x minus 2. So again, up top we have a positive number. This is actually an easier example. And on the bottom, we're approaching 2. So here's a picture, here's 2, and we're approaching from the right. So here's x, and we're coming from this way. So think of a number uh, bigger than 2, like 2.01. That's really close to 2. So 2.01 minus 2. It's a positive number over 0.01. So that's a positive number over something small, super small. So that's big, right? So that should give us should give us infinity. So you can just pick any number you like, right? I, I'm just pulling them out of thin air, right? That's what it seems like. That's because I am, <laughs> right? I'm picking numbers that are really close. You could have picked 2.0001 minus 2. This is just a way to think about it. This is not really correct. Like this, the work here is not really correct. This is not correct mathematics. Uh, this is just us clarifying our thoughts. Again, the only way to really show work here um, is to use like a proof. So, uh, so yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. And in the videos that follow, uh, you'll see more examples of this. That's it.